with this table, we're going to quickly run through this pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical agents that are then appropriate to treat, treat different parts of uh, or different types of blood pressure. Thiazides, we talked about this already. First line usage. Patients with gout, pregnancy, electrolyte disorders, avoidance. Be careful, please. Because with thiazides, it's the fact that every once in a while, it's able to actually retain certain things, right? And thiazide, tell me about its uh, effect on calcium. It doesn't get rid of it. actually holds on to it. Where does it work? I told you earlier, it works on the DCT. works on the receptor that PTH works upon. And there's every possibility that thiazide might actually reabsorb the calcium. Keep that in mind. Beta blockers. Prior MI. Stable angina. A to arrhythmia. What are you trying to do in those patients? Well, hypertension. But then if it's stable angina, remember, what are you trying to do with this patient? It's the fact that you're trying to decrease the demand of oxygen for, by the heart. And so therefore, by giving beta blocker and stable angina, who's your patient? Hey, doc. Walk a couple blocks and, oh, I have chest pain. I stop and the pain then goes away, right? Exertional angina, stable. What might you want to do? Beta blocker, hypertensive, and these are issues. But avoidance, if your patient already has heart block, hmm? if it's some type of, let's say, AV uh, nodal type of uh, blocks, but why would you want to use a beta blocker? There's every possibility that you might stop the heart permanently. Why would you want to do that? Six sinus syndrome, same concept here as well. It's the fact that you have an arrhythmia in which there's going to be a little bit of a gap right? As far as your EKG is concerned, and you don't want to stop the heart permanently. COPD, remember, please, if you stimulate your beta-2 receptors, albuterol, inhalers, what are they going to do? Whoop, bronchodilate. So please make sure that you pay attention to in great detail as to when you use a beta blocker to make sure that your patient does, is not suffering from bronchospasms because then you may exacerbate it. Same thing with asthma. Let's continue. ACE inhibitor, you tell me automatically, your patient if it has diabetes, if your patient has diabetes mellitus, ACE inhibitors would be a good thing. ACE inhibitors would be contraindicated. Which patient, please? We talked about this a number of times. Atherosclerosis. Remember, the patient and the body requires angiotensin II to then preferentially work on which arterial? Efferent. You constrict it, you're going to restore GFR. And so therefore, by giving an ACE inhibitor, all you're going to do is exacerbate it. So make sure that you pay attention. Pregnancy, renovascular hypertension, and angioedema are conditions in which you try to avoid ACE inhibitors at all costs. Definitely pregnancy because it's a teratogen. Not only is it going to work on the pregnant lady, but it's going to kill that fetus. You kill the kidneys, ki kill the fetal kidneys, and you don't want that. Arbs, heart failure, diabetes, kidney disease, pretty much the same issue here as well. Calcium channel blockers, atorrhythmia, and especially ran out syndrome. Who's your patient right now? They walk out into the cold. When they walk out in the cold, what may then happen to the fingers? You may then have aggregation, right? You might actually have cryoglobulinemia. And when you do so, then what then happens to the digits? The digits then may become bluish and cyanotic. Welcome to Reynolds. And so therefore, you're thinking about using calcium channel blocker. However, avoidance, once again, heart block, sick sinus, pregnancy, and heart failure. Aldosterone receptor blockers. And here, once again, prior MI, heart failure, Pregnancy and hyperkalemia, definitely avoid by giving, remember, remember don't, don't forget this, aldosterone normally exists to get rid of your potassium. If your patient already has hyperkalemia, maybe secondary to renal failure, and you give an aldosterone blocker, the effects of aldosterone have been lost, what are you going to do? You're going to exacerbate the hyperkalemia, and what is that going to affect? It's going to affect your heart, Right? Isn't that the number one organ you're worried about? Absolutely. And so therefore you might have tea tenting, as you should know. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.